So I made a mistake in one of my recent videos about all my favorite features of the new 3.0 update. I kind of had a brain burp and it's something I knew and I didn't catch it until someone pointed out and I was like, ah, oh, I knew that. Anyways, I'm here to correct it. So what was my mistake? Well, I placed my stereo effects loop block in my signal chain after some stereo effects. And you might be thinking, well, that doesn't sound like a problem and it wouldn't be except for this little tiny detail. See, if you look at the HX stomp here, you only have one outlet of the send loop. And so I'm coming out with a regular patch cable going into one side of my jet revelation, coming out stereo and going back in stereo. But in order for anything before the effects loop block to remain its stereo image, you have to come out of here with a TRSY cable, not a standard patch cable. And this is something I knew and it was something I was gonna change later down the road. And then I was doing this thing in the video where I was showing the new stereo imager that came out with the 3.0 update. And what it does is it takes a mono signal and splits it in two and it, it kind of creates a stereo image except for I had my stereo effects block after it. So basically what I was doing was taking that effect that splits your mono signal, makes it stereo, and then I was summing it back to mono before coming back out stereo. I, I had it all wrong. Anyways, I knew this was an issue. I just usually make sure that my stereo effects loop block comes before any of my stereo effects, even my dual cabs. But in the clip you can see I'm demonstrating the new stereo imager and it's a mistake and it's like, oh my goodness. So I'm here to redeem myself. But before I get into that, I need to remind you that we're only a few days away to the end of the Christmas giveaway. If you don't know, I'm giving away the Little Robbie Pilot MIDI controller that's made specifically for the HX Stomp. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I made a video about this already, showing you how you can enter the giveaway and also what this pedal can do. I'll link everything you need to know down in the description. You can go watch the video. You can also just go sign up directly. I'll leave that link down below as well. All right, so back to the topic at hand. I finally got the correct cable that I need for my board. I have a TRS cable on this end. It's got tip, ring, sleeve. And on this end, it's just two TS cables, they say, tip and ring on the back of them. So I'm going to install this and then we're gonna listen to the stereo imager and make sure it does what it claims it can do. But I need to install it on my board and so if you don't like watching this kind of stuff, feel free to use the timestamps below and skip to the part you wanna see. But I know a lot of you like watching this stuff and since I gotta do it anyways, I figured I would film it. And if you remember my command center video, you know that my MIDI signal was not routed to utilize command center out of the stomp. I never thought I would need it routed that way, but now that we have command center, I kinda wanna play with it. So I'm gonna need to reroute those and if you remember, I had these red and purple MIDI cables. I finally got some black ones. These are the EBS cables. I can link these down below. Really flat, low profile. They don't stick out near as far. You can see the profile difference in these two cables. I mean, that's, that's pretty extreme. So I'm gonna reroute all this. And if you've never seen any of this before, I have the Jet MCX going under my board to the MIDI box four by Disaster Area. Out of the Disaster Area, I go to the HX Stomp, then I go to the MIDI version of the Revelation and the MIDI Broken Arrow. But now I'm going to come out of the Jet, go straight into the Stomp, into the MIDI box, and then to my other MIDI pedals. All right, got some more zip ties. Also bought another five pin to five pin MIDI cable. I like these because these are the ones that you can unscrew and adjust the right angle. Like if I needed it to come this way, which I don't know, I might need to change it. I had to change it on my other one to reach the stomp, which I think I'm going to see how the pins are that way. And I don't want my cable coming up. I'm gonna want it coming down. So I'll probably have to change that as well. All right, first let's undo our MIDI cables. TRS MIDI cables, get those all undone. As you can see here, I did a really good job and I got it all zip tied up, but now I gotta take it apart. Luckily, I tried to zip tie all my individual cables together. That way, if I just need to replace one, like this one, then I can do that without undoing all these other cables. They're still all attached in there. I think I did that for the most part, everywhere I could. Very careful not to clip any of these wires. And I'm really hoping the new MIDI cables actually fit and will make it where we're trying to go. All right, so now I wanna come out of the jet, and right now it's going into the MIDI. I wanna come out of the jet, go in to the stomp, out of the stomp with my new cable. Yep, yeah, just like I thought, I'm gonna to have to, um, I don't want the cable going up, I'm gonna to have to turn this around. So all you gotta do is take the screws out of the back of here and just move the cable to the other side. And yeah, it's an adjustable right angle MIDI cable. These are convenient. Little plate comes off. 
and then we just move it to the other side. And it takes some persuasion to get it down. I'll let the screws help bring the, the pressure evenly on this plate. I'll get this one started. There we go. That easy. So now I'm going to come out of the stomp, go down. Oh, those are actually two different brands. I thought I had the same brand. So apparently it's two different brands that make these. And now I'm gonna go into my MIDI box. Technically that fits, but I'm gonna go ahead and switch the, the cable around on this one too so I can manage the wire a little better. So it's almost Christmas. Have y'all got all your Christmas shopping done? Doing it all online? Probably, most likely. I definitely am. Try not to go anywhere. Really the only place I go is to church to lead worship. And as much as I don't like to, I've been doing really good at not hanging around a lot of people. I'm trying to keep risk as low as possible while the virus is still pretty high in our area. If you don't know, I am immunocompromised. I had a kidney transplant in 2019. And what I didn't know is I would be immunocompromised my whole life, but it's okay, got a new kidney. Things are good. All right, now the wire's coming out, so now I can like get another zip tie and get that down. And now we gotta get the overdrive and the reverb to these. So hopefully they will be able to reach. Okay, that's doable. I like that. Let's get rid of this for a second. Man, I just need to be a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. I could move my MIDI box a little bit closer. Okay, technically it's all wired up, but I need to hook it up and make sure before I get too far. Okay, so it works and I'm gonna get it all zip tied and then we'll plug it in and see how it sounds. Hello, I didn't know I was still recording. All right, so it all works, I think. It's all hooked up, everything is, I'm getting signal through. So let's see if I can redeem myself with the stereo imager that is new. So let's bring in a, um, just minimize that. Let's start a new preset. We'll bring in an amp and a cab, not a dual cab. So this should just be um, a mono signal. We'll do US, US Princess. And let's see what that sounds like. Some of my settings all got bumped when I moved my pedal board around. Now, that's a pretty much mono signal. So we go down here to volume pan, go to stereo, that's where you'll find it. Stereo imager. And let's assign it to foot switch one. Foot switch two. And this is what it sounds like when it's on. Stock settings. We have some stuff we can manipulate here. It says mono in, which we are going mono in. So I don't know why you would want a stereo in. Our width, let's make it as wide as possible. Pan, left, right. Maybe we can see what each channel is doing. And our level. Let's save that for a second. Let's see, dry signal. Definitely wider. Let's go stereo in. Can y'all hear that? It like, I heard a but now I'm not hearing anything. Maybe it was switching from mono to stereo. It's like when you switch from mono to stereo, it kind of, it goes slowly, sounds like. So, mono. Mono in should be stereo out. Let's mess with this pan. All the way to the left. All the way to the right. So that's a very chorusy sound. So I guess that's what it's doing. It's Splitting the signal, it's adding a little chorus to the, in this case, the right-hand side. 
But see, I don't hear it now. Huh. Now I hear it on the left side. It just went away. Did you hear that? So, it's definitely doing something. Let's put it right in the middle again. I heard that chorusy sound and then it, and then it goes away. So now let's put in a stereo effects loop and we should retain our stereo sound. You can definitely hear the difference between the mono and the stereo. It's like it fattens it up a bit too, I hear more low end. Awesome. Well, since we're here, let's see if we can now send some MIDI, instant MIDI commands through our snapshots, which is what I tried to do. Be I did it before, but I didn't have it hooked up right. So let's see if I've got it hooked up right. So we go up here to Window, Command Center, and we have our instant commands here. I want to do a MIDI CC. I need to pull up my MIDI command charts again because I don't really remember. Channel 1, value 127. Let's do that. We're sending it to 3 because that's my overdrive, channel one, and a value of 127, good. We'll make that snapshot one, save. When we go to snapshot two, I also want to bypass switch on, 23, 127, 27, save. And I also want to turn this off, and that was snapshot, that was CC1, and we'll leave the value at zero for snapshot two. Okay, so we go to snapshot one. I should turn the overdrive on. It just came on. I'll let you hear that. Let me turn it back off. It's our clean tone. Snapshot one, turns on the overdrive. Snapshot two, turns off the overdrive, turns on the reverb. So now it works. I can control my MIDI pedals skipping the MCX if I wanted to. I just don't have near the capabilities that I have with the MCX. But if you wanted to do something as simple as turn on and off your effects per preset, you can now do that with Command Center. It works. All right, let's do something a little more complex with Command Center if we can, since we have time. We're in snapshot three. I'm gonna go back to turning this on. So we want three. We want to turn our overdrive on. We want our revelation to come on, which is channel two. What was this, 23, I think? We want that to come on, let's save that. And then when it comes on, let's have the, I have the overdrive in the amber setting. So let's change that. We're gonna do a CC3 value of one. Channel three, CC3, a value of one. And then we need a CC, let's select something else with the overdrive. We chose the clipping diode and let's let's go to CC4, a value of three to go up 75%. And now we got two more. Let's do two things with the revelation. Let's increase the mix and decay. CC20 and now my value is kind of like the knob. So I want to set it, I want to set both things at 70%. That's like turning the knob up 70%. Save that, and then where's my decay? That was my mix. That was my mix. The decay is CC21. Let's turn that value up to 70, because why not? All right, so now let's test it. That was snapshot two. It turned the overdrive off, turned the revelation on. Now I'm gonna do snapshot three. It should increase. It should turn on the broken arrow. It's on the amber. It should change it to a different color and it should crank up the reverb, which might sound crazy. It works.
works. Awesome. All right, so we did it. I think I redeemed myself. I finally fixed what I needed to fix so that the stereo imager would actually work. And now I don't actually have to be concerned about where I place my stereo effects loop block, which is really nice. It's something I've been wanting to do. And now I'm set up to use Command Center a little more. And hopefully this excites you by seeing what you can do with Command Center, even without a MIDI controller. Which reminds me, there's just a couple days left to enter to win the Little Robbie Pilot MIDI controller that controls snapshots tap tuner and, no, tap tempo and tuner. So with this and the HX Stomp and a couple other MIDI pedals, you can now, just like I showed you, pull up instant MIDI commands via the snapshots and use these switches to do whatever you want in your signal chain in the HX Stomp. I think it's pretty cool that you can do all this. If you guys have questions about the cables I used, I'm gonna try to find those, put the links down in the description so you can go check those out. Remember to like this video if you did, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything new. There's a lot of cool stuff coming up very soon. You don't want to miss out on it. I think that's all I have. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.